what's up people so today we are going to complete the uh, raspola thing we were uh, working on and the first thing is what are the updates okay let's just quickly go over all the updates Yeah, so the first thing is uh, I refactored the code a little bit. I think the last thing was now on 19th June. Since then I've refactored the code a little bit. It's just, you know, just making it a little bit better. Then second is um, I basically redid the whole transformers wallet thing. Not exactly read it, but actually rewrote the token sort of thing the tokenization uh, all the format now you can like pass it strings or list of strings if it is tensor 1d or it can also be like a 2d tensor and it would like properly uh, return you all the things moreover if you add like bos is equal to true then by default by default first of all it's going to like always going to pad your sequence to the longest uh, length in any given array basically and if you pass bos then it will always add BOS irrespective of whether the BOS existed in the input or not. So I think this like makes much more sense. It's much more simpler, straightforward now. And based on that, the transformer model was improved a little bit. So the first thing is the transformers now by default, the one thing we did really miss and it was very stupid. I think we, we should have implemented it at right at that particular moment was that the transformer now uh, you need to pass the custom attention mask we were actually passing it the um, okay we were not passing it anything but th this particular value existed which is a good for casual attention but not for uh, any other kind of attention so now by default we create a bird style attention uh, again it's not the fastest method out there but i guess the job done and the targets similarly the tokens have been like simplified extremely similarly the targets have been simplified extremely uh the attention masks or the basically the attention values for targets it still remains it's a bit annoying to actually fix that thing uh but we'll work on that later yeah and um yeah i think this is also something new which is oh there's no response so response object is uh, quite simply it's a straightforward response thing much like um, the outputs in the hugging face library okay and finally the core.py was built and what you do is you have this primitive and what primitive does is it it's it's the place where you actually add your code and all those things you can also like just call it like a default uh, pytorch module it would just return whatever the module model has Moreover, uh, it has this new train wallet function. The thing is that uh, whenever you want to build a new primitive, the training should be absolutely first class. It should be immediately supportable right inside the primitive. And so the dot train function is now completely, you know, inside this thing. And you got a very beautiful visualization. Let's just uh, run this thing and see. Python 3. Dash dash s and you can see. Now, so you can see the model actually is training. This is the identity function. Yeah, and the idea of identity is that wherever the similar things match, they have to come together. So ideally it should just be like a very big uh, just diagonal values with one. But the thing is you take this softmax attention and then you like manipulate a little bit. And so clearly that part uh, doesn't work out very well because quite simply I just like take whatever attention is available multiplied by 10 uh, that's it so that's like one part that can be improved but I, I mean I, I'll just show you how this thing can be trained very easily yeah so the first thing is uh, we need to build the identity data set which is like a bunch of random things that keep on happening and after that you just define your data set um, which is a tensor basically and then you identify I am um, like give it the primitive create the primitive and then you just do like you know train ds so ds is the actual data set and f dot identity is the manual function that will return you the uh, 
uh, masks for this thing so you can see identity returns two things one is the input itself as well as the attention value reverse again you can see basically returns the particular object and then um, reverses this thing also provides you the attention masks okay so i think those are all the updates from um, those are all the updates from yesterday and till now yeah i mean there's a bunch of uh, cleanup like config 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 moreover in the tests it's much more simpler all the values are like now defined at the top so and these things you just pass at these values it just you know makes life much more simpler okay so today we have to do two things first is we need to save this thing um, in the cache folder and then we'll like yeah we'll like create the parser for this which you know requires a bunch of regex that's it okay so the first thing is you need to define the cache folder ras cache also i just got my first vaccine so yeah our cache folder is equal to os dot path dot join uh, from folder and cache folder right. self dot save path is equal to os path dot join self dot cache folder um self dot cache so you can just test this thing out yeah we can see the exit here Hmm. So identity name OS is not defined. Also, the tests are not PyTest because this is so much more simpler. Hmm. Yeah, so this is the place where it will actually save the file. So you have RAS, 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 cache and yeah this is the entire file object i think we also need to include like plus dot uh, pt yeah so this is the place where the file will actually be stored okay um if OS dot path dot exists self dot save path um, dodge dot load state predict self dot no wait how does this work Dodge dot load path model. Uh, self dot load self dot model dot load static self dot safe path um, map location is equal to CPU. Because sometimes you train on two dice, it's just an absolute nightmare. Else, or warnings, warnings, um, Python. Okay, import warnings, warnings, start, warn, yeah. 
no file found. File found at path so save path loading from here loading this and here you just say that you know no file found at this location So training is done we'll actually just save this thing which is self dot model torch dot save right uh, yeah torch dot save self dot model dot state date and the path is self dot model path no save path All right let's see if this thing works yeah first need to create the raspberry which is OS dot make dirs uh, self dot cache folder exists okay is equal to true uh, okay you can see the RAS folder has been created Yeah, so it throws a warning. That's right. And also save send this save this model. And what if I do um, run this thing again? All right. Load state take. So this will be torch dot load. Okay, cool. So the files are now being loaded and saved. Uh, we should probably put a warning up here as well. Warning start one. Writing files. Self dot save path. Yeah, I think that's it. Right. perfect so the models are now being saved now that brings us to like the uh, I would say the final problem at least for this demo which is that uh, we need to write the compiler that takes in this particular piece of code and then uh, can like return the object itself yeah yeah okay so how do we go about it let's just delete whatever i have till now i mean i think we'll have to rewrite pretty much everything so why even try all right first of all what is this file what is this file um the answer is that this file has a compiler for RASP language. Should even rename this thing as compiler. It's not really a compiler, so it's let's just let's just call it parser because I have a lot of respect for these compiler people. I mean it's a very fucking hard thing to build. A good compiler. File has a compiler for RASP uh, language. 
also. Um, how can you actually load up the modules? You can load modules um, in the following ways. First is you can just pass a pa um, you can like call primitives. So there are two kinds of models, right? There is a primitive that these are like built-in primitives, and then there are primitives that can be defined at runtime itself. So you have built-in primitives. Um, which can be loaded by the um, by this file and custom primitives primitives yeah for this um, we need to parse things and see. So I went to the Rasco official wala thing and they have these two things which I found really interesting. One is you have the Rasp Lexer kit tokens um, or Rasp kit tokens and th this is a good place to basically will copy up all these uh, things and they will like help us out here. Like we know that these are the things that you can actually generate. Um, we'll, I think we will have to just copy paste this entire thing and yeah like build it manually and second is this is a cheat sheet again uh, cheat sheet is good when you're actually just trying to build all these things and it's supposed to behave in a certain way now again I cannot guarantee that it will behave in a certain way but it's still good to just uh, you know um, yeah I mean it's good it's good for demo just to see if things are working out or not if, if the model is compiling etc etc and the I'm completely skipping over the training wala part which is I think it's fine I mean um, the objective is not to actually create the entire language it's um, it's just as a practice <laughs> right. so first thing is we need to define the parse uh, module sorry let's right. draw this thing This is what I was thinking. You basically have the uh, user code. This is the input. This will be sent to a callable module. Now there are a couple of ways we can do this. The first is we explore the tiny grad wala thing and how you can actually do it like that. Okay, this is not exactly tiny grad ka thing, but you like define uh, the thing as a yeah you have a cl build wala thingy it returns a particular context object right so it returns a reduce and then like it, it reduces basically a function and you can like this entire function is converted to like pythonized and then you can like call this function and pass it all the values that you have like defined here so we can have a similar thing which is like build Build is not a default Python command, right? Um, Rasp. Yeah, Rasp build. This takes in the code, uh, which is a string type. Yeah, nothing else. You don't really need anything other than code, right? Um, this takes in the code and returns um, a rasp code dot primitive object a rasp dot code dot primitive object that can be called 
because we have overridden overridden uh, call method okay for wow, this is a pretty complicated thing let's start with something simple the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to you know code is equal to code dot strip i mean why not it's pretty much basic thing get the tokens all right now this is where we'll basically copy paste whatever these guys have already done which is um see what are the required things so you have aggregate this is copy paste copy this entire thing Now what are the required things? You have this thing set as of I'm not exactly sure about any of this. Selector example show full sequence of no. Why do you even have exit or example? No, let's not have exit. Exit. Load equal to yes. Equal to is a good thing. Comma depth. Why is this function used? As it has this dictionary wallet support, I don't think I don't think we are going to have this thing. Yeah. So you're basically left with. Okay, so basically left with select aggregate uh, we calibrate I don't think this is useful at all I think we'll like have to build our own parser that right parser uh, let's open regex 101 the first thing we need to like find is um, what are the functions select indices 5 c comma comma indices 5 comma 0 0 equal to this thing this is a good habit um, so we can like split up all these values very easily function Okay. Then you have um, this thing, and then you can have any number of arguments in here. Now this thing has to be plus. Because you can have like something like this as well. So yeah. Um, I think we need to like open up a new notebook and then figure it out here. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm super bad at this. This is uh, what I learned from uh, when I was working on free serve ka thing, and they have this entire place where um, you can take in actual code strings. Like they have like defined the packets, but the way packets are defined is that they're very human centric. So it's very human readable, and human centric, and then you can like actually you have a packets.def file and then from that dev file it parses the regex and like generates packets for all these different languages so whether it is for js in front end or python for a proxy server or um, you know ck directly to the c yeah you have this and you can just do you know regex so the first thing is uh, we need to define what is the function name and if def in code get the, uh, get the functions because you can have something like we uh, can just have this thing. All right. Code is equal to code dot strip. We need to split by this. We need to like define this entire section and split according to this thing. So the way to do this would be have def um, and you can have like dot star backslash n you can have dot star backslash n star till you are like here I guess no I can't I used to be so good at regex. Can't remember shit now. So the first thing is we can actually just remove the all the uh, mass slash as star uh, not star plus starting with new line um, you know, whatever it is you can simply remove that entirety so if I do this 
Uh, there used to be like a substitution here. Cool. So the first thing we add is removing the comments. Step one, remove the comments. I got sub uh, this um, to this chord. And I can just actually copy paste this entire thing to be sure that what we are doing is consistent in both our web wala thing as well as this thing all right remove comments and blank lines code is equal to re.sub r backslash n backslash star backslash n to this code mm. what you know how man the song is so addictive start with this you can have this and this is where it ends no it doesn't work man. fuck it What is the thing for slash star and slash n dollar? Remove blank lines. I keep thinking that if we could just, you know, um, backslash and backslash i, maybe. If we could build actually build like a compiler, I'm uh, sorry, build an AI agent that simply parses Stack Overflow and like keeps on iterating and gives you like solutions to different programs and learns from that. That is basically, you know, the programming is solved after that thing. Yeah, let's just uh, substitute this thing. Damn it, the copy function in this thing doesn't really work. Hmm. Starting all the sequences for drop करने का है। What the fuck is this, huh? What is this behavior? See, this is why I don't trust these websites. I mean, it's working fine here, but it's not working here.
Anyways, fuck it, doesn't really matter. In fact, it's pretty easy actually. What you can do is code for C2 L. C2 is a list for L in code dot split all the new lines if R E dot sub backslash S star L Len greater than zero only then C2 dot append L and now your code is equal to backslash n dot join c2 yeah i mean this works as well much simpler okay step two uh split into functions and uh, lines individual lines basically so we need to check if there are functions in this thing if def in code there is some function now, now we need to like extract the function now you have this code got till here and you have this code def s dash w plus Okay, dash w is um any word character this thing then you have that class star then you should have this thing again it can have anything after that and then backslash star and then you should have this and then it's just star multiplier backslash n multiplier backslash n dot star maybe and then you have this but here's the shit it's going to uh take this entire sequence hmm oh yeah what if I split by this print re dot split you know for x and re dot split uh code print x Yeah, it, it found the groups. So again, this is not very useful. Hmm. I'm pretty sure, like a proficient regex person, if he ever looks at he or she looks at the stream. They would be like, you know, what the fuck, man, this is so easy. Why can't you just do it? Python <laughs> regex extract functions.
can have multiples of this and also have spaces there, right? Backslash star and comma right. So what does this give me? def function okay so i got the function okay now i have the arguments as well okay now i have to do a backslash star back this thing and then I have to do this thing which is dash w dash s equal to comma k multiples uh, this thing of course this thing can just be you know you don't really need it to be this complicated, you can just keep this as backslash w it would still work. Similarly the arguments here can be anything in this box as well. So if you have like say five from on this, it would give you this thing. Cool. So we have the arguments we're gonna extract it. Now the thing is, how the fuck do you actually extract this thing? Backslash s, backslash w, multiples, you can have these things, you can have commas, you can have equal to, so you're going to have this thing. And then once you are done with all this, you need to going to need to close this thing and let's see. Um Maybe if I just do I have to do re dot match print re dot match. None. So much beautiful. 
this thing and this is FN2 okay so we got this far um, now what we have to do is all FNs append um, yeah how do we get this entire thing if I do an re dot sub maybe that helps code is equal to go re dot sub this pattern and then this thing primary code and code uh, yeah I think this works yeah so this works code is equal to this thing you can actually just pre-compile this thing as um, fn regex is equal to re dot compile yeah. and you can just do fn regex here fn regex here perfecto perfecto next uh, step is going to be to actually define the arguments check the arguments and because we are writing like a parser it needs to be very accurate like it needs to tell that you know this is the shit that you're doing wrong and so what you can do i should name the stream a person writes regex for two hours straight and still can't figure out shit is equal to x dot strip for x in x uh, r x dot split comma so you can have like def fn3 and it just does this you know it's fine um yeah we have the arcs and then what you can do is if x starts cool if arcs uh, for a in arcs for a in arcs if in a raise value error incorrect argument passed in function incorrect argument what a passed in perfect this thing actually works and if i do like perfect so cool this thing is now working uh we are getting all the arguments out of this thing as well uh, what's the next step we have the arguments defined and then you have the body so you need to like process the body now butcher shop because this thing processes bodies P bodies processing bodies a cytoplasmic ribonucleic protein whatever uh, 
body line uh, line has okay next thing is what this needs to do is you have the body right so let's just have say a body ready and then some bodies can be more than one line so you know it's completely fine so what we actually need to do is we need to have the um dash w plus no we need to have the same regex as yeah that dash w plus see that's what happens when you do shit simply so this is your function name um then you're going to have the brackets after any number of spaces so maybe you know this thing and you can have it written like you know maybe somebody decided that this code looks beautiful so maybe if they have it as a code like this okay right. so you have this thing and again we need to like get the regex pattern from here which is can have this thing okay. and then you are going to close this thing and it's expected to see this yeah and then we can like continue substituting these values and if any one of the values remains then we can simply print that and say that you know hey this is a wrong regex function compile body regex i dot compile oh yeah. so you have the this is um actually print out the lines so for x in isn't that stupid though i mean you can just do a substitute for x in body dot split this thing also just works right i mean there's nothing wrong with this as well you know. Split. What if I don't have this thing? What happens then? Oh, so the stupidity is that the last one would still be considered. Now here you can see it has considered. Yeah, it has considered this entire thing as like one sequence. So we anyways need to have the regex. Like so it doesn't really matter if it has this thing or not because we need, still need to process the body so we have body rd dot um, for x and rd dot find all body index and x and here you can have This is actually a list of two things one is the function name and the other are the arguments 
so fn and r is equal to x and it is to r seriously oh this is the input function and this takes an argument r We also need to have like a definition where it can like you can like check if the arguments that are required by a certain if all the arguments required are actually passed or not. You know what? I'm feeling absolutely garbage right now. It's definitely not due to the vaccine, but meh. Let's do one thing. Let's just stop recording this thing. I'll just complete this thing in the off stream and then like uh, once we raise the PR and all that, we'll see what happens. Alright, bye bye. Like we'll we'll complete this project. Don't worry about it. Bye bye.